Hi everyone, Sheena here. Today I am going to be talking about intentions, intention setting. Uh, with the new year coming up, I was thinking a lot about how I tend to be a little resistant uh, when people ask me like what my new year's resolution is going to be or when they ask me about uh, what uh, what I want for the new year or, uh, and, and I think it's just cause I, I, I tend to steer away from, you know, what, uh, the, the kind of like general cliche sort of things are. And, and that's just like my own thing. Um, but over time I do feel like, um, as an intentional human being, as a person who works to create their own reality and kind of bring in and attract, uh, the world that they want to see in front of them, that I don't tend to think about the new year as the time to set an intention because I'm doing that all the time. Um, but at the same time, I understand that the energy of a new year is strong and there's a lot of momentum there. And I think that we can, uh, we can use the new year to set good intentions. And and I think another reason I, I tend to kind of like veer away from it is because I look at time differently. Um, you know, I, I look at the calendar and the clock time as calendar or as Eckhart Tolle calls it, clock time, uh, where I know that that is like a time stamp. It is, it is relevant in our world. It is so helpful, uh, for being a tool in our world of time management and building savings and finances and setting goals and, um, and having systems and things like that. But ultimately in the grander scale, time is, uh, is not as, um, confound. It's, it's rather constructed in our reality. So I try to let myself not always stay so attached to the clock time and the calendar time. So a new year for me is a little bit a part of that constructed reality. However, I am a part of that constructed reality. Uh, I do have jobs and I, I do engage with uh, people that use that time quite regularly and I use that time quite regularly. So, um, so yeah, New Year's, right? New Year's resolutions, people call them. Uh, I would like to start to shift that language um, to just just intention setting in times where the momentum is strong and New Year's does have a strong momentum because we do tend to uh, look at our life, reflect upon the last year and, and really set goals and ideas for, for the following year. So, um, so for this year, um, I, I want you to think about uh, just that in practice of intentions, the practice of setting to intentions. And I made a post about it earlier in the week, uh, on my Instagram, uh, evolved being, by the way, if you're not following me on Instagram, um, check that out because, uh, I do like to, uh, post on there and, uh, put my videos up on there and, and it's nice to have more, uh, network there, but, uh, priorities, I was talking about priorities and how intertwined priorities are with intention setting. And I think a lot of times when we set a new intention or we set a new goal or we set a resolution, we don't always stick to it. I mean, look back upon your new year's resolutions or, or you're just your goals in general. But since we're, we're going with the new year, look back upon them. Like how many of them did you hold strong to, right? Are you a type of person who, who can say that I definitely set goals and, and I, and I, you know, I meet them or you're a type of person who tends to set goals, you know, uh, and, and they work for you in a moment and then, and then you kind of let them go. And I think some easy ones we can talk about are diet and exercise, right? Like those are two big ones that seem like a lifelong practice of goal setting and intentions and resolutions that we make around them, right? Like, you know, improving our health, losing weight, uh, having, eating more vegetables, right? Limiting our amounts of meat or fats or sugars or coffees or alcohol or whatever it may be. You know, we tend to, that's, that's a, that's a hard one for a lot of us, you know, we're challenged in that area. And, you know, it's good to look in the past and, and look at your cycles, look at your patterns, reflect upon them because those have information for you. And if we just go on continuing to set similar goals, similar patterns, similar intentions, uh, similar resolutions, and, and we don't really look upon the ones prior and see why something didn't work or why something did work, uh, we might be missing some information that's really necessary for our goal setting in, in our future endeavors. So, so that's one 
place to start. So looking back to our lessons that we've already set, where have we followed through and where haven't we followed through? And when we followed through, what led us to follow through? Why was it easy? Why, why, why did we have the, um, the wherewithal to, to continue forward, to forge ahead and where we didn't hold true to those new goals or resolutions or intentions, where did we fall short? Why did we fall short? You know, why was it difficult? What challenged us? What happened in our lives that, that made us not be able to follow through? Uh, and perhaps we didn't need to follow through or perhaps, you know, perhaps we did and we, we need to go back and look, you know, I mean, all of that is open ended here. Like none of this is right or wrong as always. Um, and very, I'm taking that very neutral position because the, the, the idea about growth and the idea about evolution is never to look back and get hard on ourselves, right? We don't, we don't look back and say, oh, I, you know, I should have done this or I should have done that, or I'm a bad person because of this or that. No, no, no. It's never about that, right? Like it's always about looking back to learn a lesson, to say, how do I use this information to move forward? And that's it. So um, that's the first one, right? Kind of learning from our past, learning from um, things like that have worked for us and haven't worked for us um, and bring those into your new goals and your new intentions, that's going to push you forward a lot further than just setting something, right? Like, like know where you stand on stuff. Know if you're going to be able to follow through or not. Know if you're going to try and trick yourself and say, no, 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 I don't need to do this or I'm going to cheat and do this and know where your little, little hiccups are, right? Like get to know yourself and get to know your, your shadows and your, and your light sides and your tricks and your talents and, and what you're strong at, because that's all going to help you when you set um, intention and goals for the future. Uh, secondly, uh, I think be realistic, right? Be realistic. A lot of times, especially with the New Year's resolutions, I think we set things for ourselves that aren't realistic, right? Like maybe it's like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to fast you know, every Friday now, you know, but let's say we have kids or you have family members and they have dinners on Fridays and they always invite you over. Well, is that realistic? Is that going to work for you? Because you're going to have to say no to your families, or your friends or your kids, you know, so be realistic. Um, if it's financial, you know, goal setting, like, you know, are you, are you really going to be able to put away that money that you you say? Are you really going to be able to spend less in those areas? Like think about your habits, think about your past, think about the type of person you are and if it's going to work for you or not, right? We want to set a goal or something that is going to, you're going to be able to follow through. Don't set yourself up for failure because then you also have that sort of sabotaging negative shame and guilt associated with not following through. So you, so you want to be able to follow through on these intentions and goals and things like that. And once again, if you don't follow through, no big deal, right? Like we've got to just learn to move through that too. So there's a whole nother aspect there where we learn to really not feel guilt and shame, but to learn from our lessons and realize, oh, maybe that wouldn't have worked for us. Um, what else? Uh, be, be, be kind of accurate, right? Like if you want to set like a weight goal, like I want to lose a certain amount of weight instead of just saying, um, a certain amount of weight, you know, pay attention to the first thing, look at your past, look at your lessons, look at where you've been in the past. You know, where have you been your goal weight? When, where have you been able to do these things? Where have you fallen short? Then look at, um, the realistic, is it realistic to lose this much weight? But then be accurate, like how, set a date, set a date for it, right? So you have this sort of goal and this momentum to move towards. And if you have to change the date or move the date around, no big deal, right? Like that's, that's fine. You can do that as it goes, but the more accurate you are, the more re like the more able you are to reach for that goal and move towards it rather than it being sort of this very open-ended whimsical goal, um, that, you know, you can kind of easily push to the side, right? Uh, whereas if you have a nice date that's in front of you that you can can really work towards, you know what, what you can handle, you know what you need and, and if you're getting there or not properly, um, for what you're looking for. So yeah, those are some of the things I, I think are really important. Um, and, and why do we, why do we trip up and why don't we make it to these goals and these intentions and these resolutions? You know, um, I think that's something to think about too, uh, in terms of all of us, like what normally will get in our way. And I talked about uh, in one of my posts this week, like our priorities, right? We can set our priorities. We can say, I have this goal that I want to do this thing. Like I want to save this amount of money by this date. Um, 
But if our habits, our behaviors, our patterns are um, expensive, or if they are uh, tend to be more like having fun is more important, uh, and then when fun comes around, we tend to like easily set set put money there and, and, and do that, then we, we might be missing that mark. Um, and we might have to reprioritize a little bit, right? So although we might really want to save money, a priority that's underlying that we don't realize that we have might be to have fun and that fun that we have might cost money. And so you see how that can, can happen. And that's one very small example, but when we're setting these goals, look at the deeper stuff that has, you know, you know, stopped us in the past, right? Because sometimes we have underlying patterns and behaviors that although we don't think they're priorities, we don't say they're priorities, uh, they really are priorities. So it's important to look at that when intention, like when you're being intentional, when intention setting, uh, because those things will take over, you know, and sometimes they're underlying and they're deep seated and they're subconscious and everything we've talked about here has been pretty much on the light sort of surface level sort of spaces, but this can be very deep. You know, this can be very deep. A a goal could be to be more loyal to our friends, to our families, to a partner. And and maybe we have something deeper in us that is, you know, it needs something that, you know, we haven't really given it. You know, we can have an urges to be with more people or or to have more attention from other people than we're getting. And that could all of a sudden become a priority. And then we're having a, a a hard time being loyal to our friends and family and giving them our time. Um, another, a deeper one could just be self-love. You know, it could be a priority for us to have self-love, but on the deeper, you know, <clears throat> seated stuff, we might have some trauma that's not healed. <coughs> excuse me. And, and that might be pulling at us and tugging at us away from that self-love factor. So, you know, it, it, it goes in all dimensions and all levels. So, when you're setting these resolutions, when you're making big goals, when you're setting your dreams into motion, you know, ask yourself these questions, pay attention to this stuff. There are little formulas to getting us to those places. And there are plenty of people, there are plenty of books, there are plenty of, um, just systems already in place to help us see those parts of ourselves that might be stopping us from getting us to where I, where we want to go. And, and I think we all deserve those, uh, those rewards from those goals or for whatever it is we're reaching for. We all deserve that. So, uh, you, you just gotta, you gotta put the right tools into play and you gotta keep working with yourself. And then you gotta be easy on yourself when you don't get to where you, you're, you're hoping to go, uh, right away. And, uh, um, I was, I'm just finishing up a course in the hero's journey. And one of the, one of the timelines is that like, yeah, we start, we get that feeling or we get that momentum. Maybe we're losing that weight. Maybe we're saving that money. Um, maybe we're becoming more loyal or, and people are really beginning to show us, uh, how much they love us, or maybe we're loving ourselves more and there's more in there. And then, and then we have a pitfall, you know, we, we dip back down and, and then we, we don't, pull ourselves up out of that place and see it as just an opportunity to practice all those tools we've been learning. And it's in that place that we really, you know, that's our test. Those are our challenges, right? That's a part of the change process. It's a part of setting goals. It's a part of doing something new. It's a part of shifting into the being that we want to be. So remember as you're setting goals that it's okay to trip up along the way and to, you know, to keep picking yourself back up, to keep being easy with yourself, to keep believing in your process, uh, and, and to keep loving yourself more than anything. So that's it. Happy new year, uh, from my heart to yours. Uh, I'm, I'm so grateful always to be able to share on this platform. Please engage with me. Please like, please share. Uh, and I am going to keep doing this. (laughs) Happy new year.